I always had one student that didn't like me. Invariably, that was a student I didn't like either. <laughs> you know, there is just something that, that just doesn't connect. Sometimes that changes while you, you have a student in class. And one student I had at North Carolina uh, would not do the, the work that, that I wanted from him in, in the class. And, and he was failing the course, and he was bright. He was a very good student. And I stopped him one day after class and said, you know, what, what's the deal? What's happening? And, and he said, I'm not interested in this, and I'm, not, and, and I'm not going to do it. And I said, well, look, here's your choice. Either do it, or I'm going to make your life so miserable that you will wish you had never seen me. That young man ultimately got an A out of the class. And I always thought that, you know, it was the meaning of the mind, and it was the challenge that, that he was looking for. And a number of years later, someone ran into him, and he remembered me and said I was one of the toughest people he had ever dealt with in his life. That, those are good feelings. You remember those people uh, for some reason. As a youngster, we lived in a tenant house. My father was a farm laborer. The WPA had built roadside parks for people to camp out along the way. And one of those was at the side of the farm where we lived. During World War II, the Mexican laborers, the migrant population, would come through there in, the, in cattle trucks, literally, uh, with tarpaulins uh, canvas over the truck. And they would come with family, with children, and uh, they would often camp at that area. And when I saw people who were uh, of a different skin color, uh, different hair, and speaking a language which was totally different from anything I could ever imagine, my imagination carried me from there. When I got to high school where Spanish was available, I enrolled in Spanish then. Uh, when I finished a bachelor's degree and had gone to Peru after the master's, and I came back and I told my father that I was going to go back to work on a doctorate. And he looked at me strangely and he said, boy, don't you know that language yet? And I said, yes, dad, but there's other things that, you know, that, that I need to do. And he said, well, okay, if somebody else is going to pay for it, I guess it's all right. When I finished my doctorate, uh, I signed on as a professor of Spanish at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I was there from 1962 until 1967. During the uh, presidency of John Oswald, a man by the name of Paul Nagel, who was dean of ANS, recruited many of us from the Spanish department at the University of North Carolina. So uh, seven faculty members and 23 graduate students all came to uh, the College of Arts and Sciences uh, at the same time in 1967. Uh, we delivered our first doctorate in Spanish the following year in 1968. Uh, it was exciting because uh, if you had good ideas, they could be developed. Such things as the, the creation of a, of a dean of undergraduate studies to put a focus on quality of, of the undergraduate studies program with the honors program. I was never paid more than I deserved. I'll put that out there first. But I was rewarded with opportunities, and it, it was marvelous. The opportunity to uh, follow John Stevenson, who later became president at Berea, for a year in uh, undergraduate studies. And it, uh, it gave me an idea of how to work with people and deal with students. And the next opportunity was a fellowship in administration. And then department chair, which is probably the most difficult position in the university, other than president, I suppose. After that, President Singletary asked me to be on the athletics board when I didn't even know what the athletics board was. But I, I found it fascinating uh, to see what goes on behind the scenes, to understand why things happen and be able to tell people what goes on and why it happens that way. The things that I most missed when I retired was sitting down with students to talk about the paper they were going to write. Students that, uh, that I have always felt closest to uh, were those that, uh, the graduate students that become like your children. But I mentored 45 who actually finished their degree during my career and each of them was uh, uh, had their own great qualities and and the thing that I most enjoyed was that some of them were so much better and smarter and brighter and better writers than I was. And that was one of the absolute joys of teaching, to find someone <clears throat> that you knew was going to be better than you. <laughs>